friends, if you have any questions, you can post it in the chat box and uh, we'll try to answer whatever questions you have. How do we check our IBS blood test? Uh, IBS normally does not report anything if you go for a test. So that is why doctors call it uh, functional disorder. What should be the portion of raw food and cooked food? See, ideally raw food should be more, cooked food should be less. So you can, what you can do is you can have a bowl full of salads. You can have one salad meal or you can have a bowl of salads first and then your cooked food. So you, you know, normally what happens is in Indian families is we cut a plate of salads, cucumber, tomato, onion, and the whole family has from that. Now that's a very small quantity. You can have a bowl full of salads and in a manner that you feel full with the salads itself. You don't need your cooked food because cooked foods do not have the capacity to heal your body. It's only the raw food which does it. You know, many people get initially when they start on a raw food diet, they get bloating and they get bloating because your body is has not accustomed itself to the raw that you're eating. So initially you may steam the vegetables a bit, have it, and then slowly you can move towards raw. Okay, if you, you can start begin by having a limited quantity of uh, completely raw and then a bit of steamed vegetables. Remember that raw vegetables are very high in nutrients. Okay, so when you steam it, the nutrient quantity goes down. When you cook it, it goes down completely. It's completely gone. It's only a very little bit of nutrition, whatever remains. Now, when we cook our food, we have to remember that depending upon the amount of time we keep it on the gas and how high the gas is, the foods begin to lose their nutrient content. So a completely cooked food, like roti, sabji, dal and all, it does not have healing capacity. It goes inside our body and parks itself somewhere, gets converted into fat, gives you some energy depending upon whatever has remained there. So you have to shift to a bit of raw initially, first by steaming it. One question is people who has IBS were told not to eat raw vegetables or fruits because it makes it worse. How do I help someone get past this belief? See, Dhara Jani has asked this question. Dhara, you can begin with steaming them. You know, even for uh, curing people with cancer, I think Jayashree can tell you, the doctors tell you not to eat raw. But she has cured it by eating raw. Isn't it Jayashree? Yeah, yes, sir, Sharmila. Actually, yeah. yes. <laughs> See, raw does help, but then we are all not used to eating raw. So initially you have a lot of issues, but slowly, slowly you can increase your raw portion. And that helps even with IBS also, yeah, because of the so much of fiber and that stomach irritation initially but it is always nice to go slow so when i went on raw yeah. i took it one day at a time and increased it slowly slowly it went to a, at one time i was on total raw food and nothing happened to me yes because uh friends sometimes when you're starting with a smoothie and you're really excited about this new uh, phase of life and you add lots of greens in the smoothie then also you feel a bit pukey you're not able to take it so have smaller quantities we normally suggest, I what I do for normally for myself is I take about one and a half bananas and I take a fistful of greens. Now that I'm used to it, my body is able to take it. However, since I've never had junk in my life, my body was always already digesting raw vegetables very easily. So it depends. You have to train your body to accept the raw. So take a smaller quantity of uh, green leaves. You can take pudina, dhania, cholai. Once a week, you can have palak and all kinds of greens that are available currently, now that winter has come, add it to your banana and you can go to Sharon website, you can learn to make smoothies and start consuming. Slowly increase the quantity. Fiber-rich foods leads to indigestion solution. Fiber-rich foods don't actually lead to indigestion. In fact, it, they cure your constipation. Initially, it may steam, seem a little difficult because actually we are used to eating so much of cooked food. That is why this issue is there. But otherwise, go slow, your body will train itself. Intermittent fasting help me to some extent. Yes, those who of you who have IBS or who have some digestion issues should try to finish your dinner by 7, 7.30 max because our bodies are very much adjusted or uh, synchronized with the circadian rhythm. That is sunrise and sunset. If you see traditionally in Indian families, people will start, get up early in the morning. That time they will start eating 
and they will not have dinner after 7, 7.30. Think of your Garrett parents. They will not eat at 8.30, 9, 9.30, 10 like us. Like, you know, we people are currently, the younger generation is doing that. So if you finish your last meal at 7, 7.30 and you're eating the next meal in the morning, it really helps. Neema Vadwani, unable to much raw. Uh, okay, go slow, Neema. Ayurveda says not to mix fruits with vegetables and nuts. How to overcome this belief and enjoy a smoothie? See, uh, Dhara, we, if, when you make a green smoothie, you don't add nuts. You take green and you take the fruit. Why? Because both greens and fruits have the same digestion time. That is why we are, no vegetables are added in the green smoothie. And in salads also, fruits are not to be added. So we have lots of, uh, you know, videos on what to add, what not to add. There is the Sharon Salad Revolution Facebook page. You can join there and you can watch some of our sessions which are there on YouTube and you will learn a lot on how to make a proper healthy salad. No, not to worry. We are not mixing fruits with vegetables ever. Yes, Neema, you can steam a bit. Fatty liver also, the solution is in the plant-based diet because that way the fat will be wrapped in the fiber and be thrown out of the body. What about oil and ghee? Jaya. Jaya, ma'am, normally Sharon doesn't advocate oil and uh, definitely ghee is eliminated because we are on a whole food plant-based diet which does not include either uh, dood, dahi, ghee, makkhan or paneer. So you don't have any dairy produce in that. And there is absolutely no need for ghee in your body. Believe me, you get the necessary oil that you require from the seeds and the 10 nuts a day that you're allowed to consume. I, I used to have vegetable juice regularly, but now it doesn't suit me at all. Okay. Uh, Nitya, ma'am, what you can do is the vegetable juice, whenever you have it, don't remove the pulp. Have the pulp separately. Drink the juice, eat the pulp. Don't if you throw away the throwing away the pulp, that means you're throwing throwing away a lot of fiber, all the fiber in fact, and the juice enters your body, turns into sugar, into glucose. So eat the pulp and uh, preferably have vegetables raw or steamed as uh, salad. Don't have a vegetable juice. Thank you, Krishna, ma'am. So cooked food, no good. Cooked food does not have healing capacity. The live foods. Suppose you are having a pizza. You can bury a piece of pizza in the ground and see if we can develop a pizza tree. It doesn't, right? Because the food is dead. You bury a roti in the ground or chole or rajma or chana or any vegetable that you have cooked, a tree will not sprout. But if you bury a moong ki dal, with seed, uh, the with chilka in the ground, a moon tree will sprout. Why? Because that food is life. So whatever is life will heal you, will cure your diseases. Whereas the cooked food will not do. It has a very low capacity to heal. What about Dr. McDougall's starch diet, which Dr. Nandita had mentioned about? Yes, we starches are not bad at all. You can have millets, you can have, uh, you know, uh, all starches can be had. You can have potato, you can have uh, the sweet potatoes and all. Starches are good for your body. Good vegetable starch is in fact very good. Yeah, your body needs those carbs to get energy. Uh, Neema Vadana, Ayurveda always starts with ghee. What is your take on this? Uh, Neema ma'am, Ayurveda was written uh, so many years back and uh, at that time the environment conditions, living conditions were very different from what they are now. At that time, there was no artificial insemination. The cow was not being given hormones to produce more milk so that more ghee can be made and sold. Right? It was not uh, being given any antibiotics because now we are taking out milk using machines. And her udders are also hurt and injured. And all that blood or pus that is coming out is also going into the uh, milk or ghee that you are going to get. So we are not against Ayurveda. But fact is, it was written at that time and suited the population which was living at that time. Now, situations are very different. Can, can think of the population that was there at the time when Ayurveda was written. There were only desi cows. Perhaps there were no buffaloes also. Lifestyle was very difficult. People really used to walk a lot. Even in the early 1920s, if you see some old videos of India, you will notice that people were walking a lot. And nobody was obese. Now nobody walks, everybody is obese. So 
we have to change as per times, right? There was, let's say, just to give you an offbeat example, there's Manusmriti also. How many of us are actually following Manusmriti? We cannot, because maybe there is something there which we cannot accept now, right? So that is the reason. Yes, it's great that you love smoothies, Ushma and Nima. See, uh, Ushma ji, we are not saying that no oil and no ghee is a diet for IBS. What we are saying that a no oil is that a no oil, no ghee diet is good for your body. And when it is good for your body, when you are protecting your gut microbiome, you are allowing them to grow and prosper within your body. It will affect the hormones. It will increase the happiness hormone and thereby IBS is likely to be impacted. Right? It's an indirect connection. We are not saying that if you have a no oil and no ghee diet and such a diet is good for IBS. No, we are not saying that. We are talking about a whole food plant-based diet which benefits your body, benefits your hormones and helps you to remain calm and peaceful also because these uh, microbiome are constantly sending messages to the brain. Okay? I hope I'm clear. Please explain the substitute for cow milk. Okay. Cow, cow milk substitutes for if you're asking for giving to your child your child after he's been weaned off he doesn't need cow milk or any milk for that matter if you want to make some specific dishes for him then uh, it's your you have almond milk you have coconut milk you have oat milk cashew can also be used and you have peanut milk soy milk how can we avoid fertilized based vegetables will they not affect our body yes they will Sharon in fact advocates uh organic vegetables and fruits only so that you can completely avoid fertilizers and insecticides and pesticides which have been sprayed on it. So we suggest that you eat local, not fruits and vegetables which are imported from abroad because then they are sprayed so that they last longer. How do you make Punjabi curry without dahi? Uh, Meeta ji, you can go to Sharan website. You can see lots of recipes there and you can definitely make Punjabi curry without uh, dahi. Is IBS caused by gut microbes imbalance? What is the cause? There is absolutely no need for probiotics or supplements because probiotics will also contain some gut microbiomes, uh, microbiome, some bacteria, not all of them which inhabit your gut. So a best and the sure short way is to switch to lots of fruits, greens and salads so that they start growing inside you automatically. Think of it, when you were born, did you put it from outside, inside your body? No. If you are born through a normal delivery, the first area, the first time these gut microbiome entered your body is when you are passing through your mother's birth canal. After that, when your mother breastfed you, then this microbiome started growing in your body. The next way to have it in your body is to switch to a whole food plant-based diet. IBS may not be caused by my gut microbiome, but our thinking, our stress is one of the reasons for it. Probiotics need not be had, Meeta. Yes, oats is not bad for health. It says it has to be, you know, whole food. Can I take ginger, LA, kefir, kombucha? Yes, all this can be tried. J depends upon the kind of oats you buy. Steel cut oats are good. Rolled oats are still okay. But there are certain other varieties which are not good. When you see that it is processed, the outer bran is removed, then you don't buy. Yes, Neema ji, there is no need for pure A2 ghee also. Yes, Dr. Lina, diabetics can have, uh, fruits and nuts can be had only 10 a day. There is a number on it which Dr. Nandita says is the best for the human body, which is 10 nuts a day. Dry fruit, if you are having anjeer, then it is different. But if you are talking about almond, cashew, etc., walnuts, etc., it's 10 per day. Fermented food, good for IBS? Yes, idli dosa is also good. How to heal leaky gut? The solution is again a whole food plant-based diet, but time may be required to heal it. I'm plant-based diet for long, but suffering IBS and BP, raw food, not helping out the gene. My weight dress is very thin. Now, currently in my diet, there is no refined bulk. Please suggest. R. Sinha. Jayashree, I see a slightly long question by R. Sinha, who says that I'm having plant-based diet for the last one year, but still suffering IBS and BP. Raw food not helping me. After changing my diet, my weight drastically reduced. Sinhaji, you can uh, take a consultation from the I'm Sharan. Sure. Yeah. Huh? And you can uh, register for that. Mm -hmm. Let a doctor help you. As far as uh, what I can say is that uh, when my daughter turned vegan, she really lost a lot of weight. 
and she was almost gone. Her bones were showing and uh, I was a little concerned. And uh, her appetite for uh, sweet fruits and all, they, it increased dramatically. So we consumed a lot of fruits and uh, lots of salads and she gradually started putting on weight. But it also depends from body to body. So I would suggest that you take a consultation from Sharon. See, the gut microbiome, Ar Aragappan is asking this question, uh, are affected due to antibiotics consumption also. So there are, there are lots of reasons. The stress also affects the gut microbiome. So if you're stressed, your microbiome dies out. The good ones die out, the bad ones proliferate. Then if you're having less sleep, you're not sleeping properly. At least minimum six hours sleep you're not taking. That time also the gut microbiome is affected. Okay. And if you're on medicines, antibiotics, then also microbiome is affected. So can change to a whole food plant-based diet. And after a while, the situation should get okay. Which vegan curd is best that we can have every day? See, when you have vegan curds every day, let's say that you can have peanut curd or soy curd. Peanut curd is better. Have lots of vegetables and make a kind of uh, cold salad and have it. Because then when you make these curds, they have a certain taste which has to be masked by adding spices to it. You can, you can add it and consume. Have one mm -hmm. gram of protein per one kg of body weight for muscle growth, which becomes difficult without supplementation, can be achieved by plant-based diet only. Yes, uh, Karanji, because all protein is made by plants. Animals don't make any protein. So plants uh, have their own process of making the food. They make it. And when we consume those foods, we get the protein from them. Yeah, so animals consume those plants. When we consume those animals, let's say mutton and all, we think that we are getting protein from them. Protein is required in very small quantities by our body. So 4 to 5% of your daily calorie intake. About 1% of protein per kg of body weight is slightly on the higher side. You need less than that because excess protein in the body is also the reason for growth of cancer. What is cancer? It is the growth of cells, right? Our body starts growing in a disproportionate way when we consume protein, especially animal protein. So when you consume pro plant protein, you require a very small quantity of it for growth and repair, and that is easily available in a whole food plant-based diet. So rest assured, your protein requirements are automatically get getting fulfilled. And your, our bodies, through millennia of evolution, have learned how to metabolize those, those proteins and reject and metabolize those that are not required. You don't have to worry on that. Mm -hmm. Yes, Dr. Lena, you can have millet umbilis. Yeah. You supplement and uh, if supplementation is not sufficient, of course you can have, you know, uh, mm, millet umbali is fermented millet drink, right? So you can definitely have millet umbilis without any worry. Anything you ferment, leave overnight and then you consume it, you're getting B12. For example, you're getting B12 even in idli dosa batter or dhokla, etc. But it may not be sufficient. Start having it, but please check your B12 also. And uh, if you go to Sharon website, uh, there is a complete article on B12, how much is required by the body. I would request you, uh, those of you who are joining us for the first time, to go to Sharon website. It's www.sharon-india.org. It's, it's good to have oats, but you can have lots of millets also. Start consuming millets. Uh, uh, let's say... Choose between brown rice and millet sometimes. You can have oats though. You just have to make sure that it is a uh, whole food. Like it is uh, not so processed because there are so many processed varieties of oats also which are coming those ready to eat or quick meal oats that, uh, you know, that is sold in the market. Avoid those. Apart from that, you can have it. Steel cut, rolled oats, they are good. Dr. Lena, alternatives for tea, you can have, uh, you know, lemongrass tea. Or you can have hunza tea, which is practically made by whatever is available in your kitchen. Thank you so much to all the participants. It was great having you here and hope you have a good takeaway from this program. Mm -hmm.